scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If you must manifest true love, it must be captured. This dimension, pleasure. What is pleasure? Delight, gratification. There must be delight. There must be space for gratification. What is pleasure? The satisfaction derived from what is to one's liking. It cannot be a war of pain and regrets and fighting and pursuit indefinitely. No. There is a dimension to love that is defined by pleasure. Psalm 16 verse 11. Let me tell you something that is very interesting about love personified. Here's what the Bible says. 16 verse 11 Psalms. Are we there? It says, Thou will show me the path of life. Ready? In your presence is what? Fullness of joy. And then he didn't say in the hand of a 24 elder, at your right hand are what? For how long? If your definition of love is all about pain and fight and it there is no capture of the dimension of pleasure then you are not defining love based on God's terms is God speaking to us yes whether it is a love relationship whether it is a business relationship I should come and see you working on a difficult project with a smile on your face and I should say ah, ah, but I'm aware this thing is hard you mean you have to count these things one by one and there are 5,000 of them and you say even me I don't know why this thing gives me joy my brother continue that's a sign that there is love there there are many things we do and we are angry and frowning at it relationships career even work with God brothers and sisters do we not rejoice after we love God we celebrate miracles here in his presence he makes sure that the dimension of delight is featured in our serving him is delight and pleasure featured in your idea of relationship there are husbands and wives there are people in relationships where there is completely no joy and laughter and delight at all there may be passion there may be commitment but there's no delight no jokes no laughter especially for we who are very visionary people it's a side effect that comes with being visionary sometimes we can strangle every iota of pleasure from our lives i have found myself many times being unfair even to myself in this regard because of the enormous responsibilities that i have over my life and over people i'm always thinking but the Bible says even God laughs from his throne. Are we together? The Bible says laughter doeth good like medicine. Pleasure must be captured. There are times that I've been involved in ideas, involved in things, and I've enjoyed the beauty and the joy of triumph. Your business should make you laugh one day. Your pursuit of the anointing should make you laugh one day. If you continue being angry indefinitely, it can be a voice that this thing is not for you. 
there must be a time of laughter your relationship must give you laughter one day no sir from january last year till january this year you have been meeting with the lady or the guy no laughter no feeling of relaxation and happiness what what's what sort of a, a I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to be very careful so I don't dabble directly into relationship issues. Are you deriving satisfaction from your pursuit? Now, let me tell you something. If there is no pleasure in what you are loving, you will feel cheated. If there is no pleasure, if I sit down and I'm doing ministry as God has anointed me to, I, there are pleasurable moments in ministry people sow into my life people bless me I have the privilege of enjoying honor you all love me and respect me so much and I'm deeply grateful for that those are the fringe benefits It's the pleasure dimension of love I love God with all my heart I've seen his favor upon my life I've seen him shower me with blessings that if he never blesses me again I am deeply grateful there must be pleasure captured in your idea of love this is a challenge to visionary people this is a challenge to spiritual ladies hello spirituality is not an insult but we have found ourselves victims there are sisters that are spiritual they love God they don't know the inconvenience they are creating they strangle this third dimension of love intentionally as proof they feel so ashamed when there is an atmosphere of relaxation there are believers that frown at dinners there are believers that frown at any opportunity to relax and do this no no don't do this there are more important things they say is wrong there are fathers that will not allow this incorporated in their family there are mothers that will not allow this incorporated oh we just feel like getting two chickens just to cut no occasion see that's why is part of my reservation about things like valentine because they are not exactly sincere <laughs> most of the things that are done around this period are just emotions they are not revelations so someone that had no there's no iota of being nice suddenly changes for two days or four days that experience should not be desired because it will not continue Am, am I against Valentine? No, no, do your thing. But I'm just telling you that this is the revelation. There is a pleasure dimension to life. That's the reason why I came to serve God. I came to preach in Koinonia. I didn't come to drink water. However, they know that there is a dimension of love that must be captured. And they kept me a bottle of water. How grateful I am for this. Hallelujah. There are believers who don't know what the Bible calls the joy of salvation. Say it after me. The joy of salvation. Brothers and sisters, there is joy in salvation. If that experience has not been featured in your life, vet what you did that you called born again. Or vet the atmosphere you are submitting your spiritual understanding to. I detest a life that is just full of passion and commitment. And then pleasure is not captured. How about schools that flood children alone? There's no opportunity. They are either reading or serving punishment. That's how many of us were raised. That's how many of us were raised. Our families did not have provision. You are sleeping, you are praying, you are reading, or you are walking. Break time, they give you 10 minutes. Now, it looks like it's a nice thing, but it's destructive. Go and ask the most productive people and corporations. They create scenarios and force the people to have times when their minds can relax. Is God helping us? Capture this. Capture this. They met Jesus with little children, as visionary as he is. And then the serious disciples say, Abba, Jesus, you are soon to die. Remember all of this, this. And Jesus said, mm. Please carry your let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such most adults who say these are children.
please jesus let's focus on what matters jesus said i don't know what you are talking about there was a time they saw him with prostitutes and people he was not preaching he was eating with them cracking jokes and laughing if this is not featured in our lives somewhere we are missing it men of god listen to me spiritual brothers and sisters listen to me your service and your spirituality should not strangle the trouble becomes when your entire life is defined by pleasure your whole life revolves around the impulses of pleasure you are back to the feelings we are talking about yeah, na, na, na. Hallelujah. I was told the other day that the worship team went for an aerobic session. I was so blessed. You would think all they do is to pray. There was a time I think the prayer department were having, was it a seminar or something like that? And that's why after service, you should not stop people from those brief moments where they are, ah, how are you? That's why we crack jokes in the middle of the service. Even if it's a miracle service, doesn't matter whose problem. You have your medical reports, but talk to your neighbor. Tell them I love you. Say God bless you. That's why after service, I say hug someone and say something. Some of you as soon as the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, you frown your face, you go and stand outside. Listen, I respect your commitment to vision. But you are robbing yourself and God and your environment of this dimension of love. Friendliness. This dimension. Let's hurry up number four. If God is helping you, say amen. amen. The fourth dimension of love is sacrifice. Sacrifice. The length. The breadth the height the depth of the love of god it is these compositions that make the fullness of god's love what is sacrifice giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause Giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause. You must give up something if you want to fulfill the last dimension of love. Sacrifice talks of constraint. Sacrifice talks of inconvenience. Very uncomfortably, sometimes sacrifice talks of pain. A language our generation does not know again pain constraint the inconveniences that if need be you may have to go through because of someone or a cause that you consider to be nobler please look up i have mentioned four parameters ready what's number one passion what's number two commitment what's number three pleasure what's number four sacrifice sacrifice is sacrifice featured in your idea of love love for your vision love for your assignment brothers and sisters we are all happy right now enjoying what god is doing here but how many of you know that since as early as maybe sometimes seven in the morning work is already going on in cgc here prayer department members came by uh, four four o'clock praying for at least one hour for this meeting the worship team here several people you came and found seats arranged already you came and found the seats clean sometimes during the rainy season you see the pain as soon as you share the grace you are going to hug one another and go back every week i leave this place past 12 the next day past 12 because i have to spend an extra one or two hours standing the moment i come for koinonia i sit down only for a few minutes once i get up standing it is until i leave while you are sitting i'm standing sometimes during the workers retreat i am standing from at, at about nine sometimes till evening or night and afterwards i may still have to counsel people and go back show me your sacrifice 
as a proof of love show me the sacrifice you are doing for that sister as a proof that you love her show me the sacrifice you are doing for that brother show me the sacrifice you are doing for your wife your husband your children if there is no sacrifice there is no love love is measured by sacrifice not sacrifice alone but it is an index i look at parents and i see how they care for their children i look at other parents i see how irresponsible they are over their children oh we need school fees or we need something uh, sorry i need to do something and they say i love you no sir lord i love you and then you want to give offering you came with two thousand you remove hundred naira and return it back you remove 50 naira and return it back then you remove the old 20 naira and god is watching saying is that what you call love sacrifice These people are standing, every single one of them. I'm here preaching, you are here enjoying. And male and female, they are standing. If we stand during koinonia vigils, they are standing. When they get tired, they go back to rest a bit. Some of the people come, sacrifice. Believers don't understand the language of sacrifice. Every little inconvenience, there's no AC, there's no this, there's no this. Sacrifice. The sacrifice of waking up in the night whether it's convenient or not to pray the sacrifice to pursue and study the sacrifice to delay gratification with your finances god gave you one small one or two million instead of blowing it to live a fake life you say let me pay the price and sacrifice this so that my children will eat what i did not eat sacrifice how many selfish parents i'm sorry to say it with all due respect they saw the future of the children they saw their present they would have paid a price some of us would have been happy now but they chose their belly at the expense of a generation they had the opportunity to have bought the land in 1964 1974 just buying the land without developing it instead of going for one polo club competition they would have used that money to buy the land that single land would have been over 100 million today and they would have been able to train everybody empower their young men support their sisters but selfishness and they look at you and say children i love you no wonder the resentment rises in many young people for their parents there is no sacrifice you hardly will hate someone or a thing that sacrifices how many leaders claim they love their people how many pastors claim they love their members there is no index to measure sacrifice everything that is on inconvenience goes to the members the convenience comes to the pastor no sir a true shepherd lays down does not walk on his sheep lays down what are you laying down for your wife what are you laying down for your husband what are you laying down for that come darling for that lady you want to get married to what are you laying down for the guy you want to get married to? his birthday is coming oh let me put something small you call him hello sir your your birthday is coming can you give me the money to cook for you is that sacrifice is that sacrifice that sacrifice how many of our parents claim that they love a student or they love whatever they come into a city where you are there carry out a business transaction cannot even drop a small envelope is when they leave they say i came there there is no sacrifice sacrifice is not about convenience so do not expect it to be convenient there are times both for God and men, it will inconvenience you. Ask any married man. There are times you are in a straight betwixt between your child's school fees and another equally important thing. But you may have to lay it down. Bless God for some of our mothers that will not buy one wrapper for five years so that their children will eat. Now that's love to me. Bless God for some of our fathers who would rather pack the car and not take 
400,000 to buy a new gearbox. He says that 400,000 can sponsor my children. Let me send them to school. Not so that they will feed me back when they are graduates. That's investment. That's not love. Are we together? Our generation does not understand the language of sacrifice. Sister, let me tell you, you are not a good wife if you don't understand sacrifice. Unfortunately, you know I love our sisters, but there is a deception that is looming across the horizon where many ladies believe everything about relationship is all about their pleasure and enjoyment. Anything that has to do with a little sacrifice, they frown and revolt and rebel. No. How about brothers who think because you are a celebrity figure, because you are this, you are a graduate, you are working in an oil and gas company, and all these things are happening you want the lady to worship you forever because you are this somebody is lying to somebody somewhere sacrifice sacrifice how many businessmen cannot make sacrifice for their future how many young men i look at some not, not necessarily here i look around and i see young people that i know don't have anything much i see what they are wearing i watch their shoes even a millionaire is not wearing that kind of shoe and i ask them what do you have in saving them nothing and that person wants to marry and that person is looking at a lady he loves or a guy that he loves how many ladies carry their future and use it to make themselves beautiful today no sacrifice people are poor not just because the devil is powerful this sacrifice is what we lack in our generation hallelujah you are considering a relationship or you are considering marriage or you are married please don't go into it it's not a sin be ready for sacrifice first there are men who will come back with salary and ask their wives my wife can can you give this person twenty thousand? whereas you have your own one million let's tell ourselves the truth and it starts from relationship sacrifice these four dimensions are the dimensions that spell love give us ephesians chapter 3 again ephesians chapter 3 let's hurry up verse 18 that you will be able to comprehend with all the saints and that includes the family of koinonia what is the passion and the commitment and the pleasure and the sacrifice dimensions that are involved the bible calls these dimensions the fullness of the love of god i want you to look at this carefully which dimension so when you say brother i love you or sister i love you or destiny i love you or jesus i love you my question again is which one of them all of them jesus i have pleasure towards you and the things you can give me he says wonderful how about sacrifice for me how about commitment for me no i don't have those ones let me show you a secret brothers and sisters that will give you an opportunity to enjoy your marriage your relationship your vision whether you are born again or not if you subscribe to these four templates on anything you will succeed in it it's true some of the best i've studied some of the top business entrepreneurs around the world this they subscribe to this template they may not acknowledge jesus don't just look at their results look at their passion look at their commitment look at the pleasure they derive from what they are doing no matter how cumbersome and then look at the sacrifices i i studied one one particular businessman and when i saw what that guy went through I said compared to what he went through I still think that the world still should reward him his name is Nikola Tesla Tesla is one of the genesis 
had about 700 patents to his honor he lived a secluded life of sacrifice creating the inventions today that we accredit to different people it was the product of the pain of that man didn't get married in his life didn't do a lot of things began to research many of, he was light years ahead of humanity and he died living his blessing sacrifice I watch Miles Monroe's videos great mentor in life and in death I see how that that man cheated death he's long gone but his wisdom still guides us there is illumination the touch from his experiences guide us towards a great destiny what are you willing to lay down for the anointing you claim you want what are you willing to lay down for the kind of lady you are praying for what are you willing to lay down sister for the kind of husband you are praying for it is free but it's not cheap you must be willing to lay down something lord i want a visionary guy i want somebody who loves god god says they are all available let me see what you are willing to lay down can you lay down the time the ego the inconvenience will you be able to submit to such a man with gladness as one who is worthy of your honor for his paradigm oh lord i have my own ego i don't want to be cheap and god says all right go and find men who are like you but if it's my son you want you must be serious oh lord i want this lady beautiful gorgeous whatever parameters you use and god says they are available but gentlemen let me see what you are willing to lay down a lady who is that virtuous deserves a responsible man a lady who is that virtuous god will tell you deserves a blessed man if you consider that lady to be priceless enough then you must rise to the occasion we have this pride in our world that all fingers are equal it's a lie that includes human beings sister there are some kinds of brothers God will never give you the way you are. It's not a bad talk. It is true. God is not a fool. He gave unto his one five talents. Two. This is God oh, who is not unjust. God is not unjust. But he gives one five talents. I talk to brothers. And sometimes when I hear brothers, I ask them question, what kind of sister do you want? When they describe that lady, I look at the brother and I know he's joking. I already know his prayer will not be answered because God is not a fool. If you want the level of qualitative sister you are making for, you, because God will not yoke people unequally. No, sir. Lord, I want a ministry like Benny Hinn. And God says, really? Are you willing to do what Benny Hinn is doing? That for two weeks he can close himself and nobody will see him. At the beginning of a new year, the first seven days, nobody sees him. Drive fast, he's alone with God, accessing power. Don't let the suit deceive you. If you want to marry Benny Hinn, you must be able to be like him. Otherwise, you'll be unequally yoked. You will carry pleasure into the relationship. And Benny Hinn will say, you love that Benny Hinn came from this secret place. It's amazing how people revolt when they see the demands for their desires. I want prosperity. Oh God, I want to be blessed. I'm a millionaire in Jesus' name. And God says, no problem. Millionaires from me must be able to say yes, sir, to every instruction I give. Agreed? Yes. Give the only one million in your account. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, you had me. You want me to bless you. You want me to talk to someone else who is like you. To send 10 million to your account. Prove to me you are worthy to be my treasurer. By answering me every time I speak to you. You would think is the kind of Abraham's test that God will say, stop. Till your internet transfer does send is gone. And then your balance is one naira or five naira and you would think god will talk to the person to send it back it's gone and brothers and sisters two months after that giving you feel like dying and you say lord but i'm not lazy it took me three years to save this one million and the heavens become silent you think god is not watching he's looking one day this god one day you are sitting somewhere that is not your business and someone will come and say there is a contract somewhere 
um do you have a company yes i have but we are not what do you do i sell clothes leave clothes shall they come and he gives you something and all of a sudden millions enter your account and people say it's not fair say go and ask him what is not fair about it don't be angry when you see god lifting people find out what they are doing the blood that drips from their altar is what attracts the attention of heaven when you see a man of god sometimes you people just hear me talk oh the power of god is this and people are shouting it's not magical my brother find out what my secret place is don't don't claim i say it he is grace but we are not stupid there is a sacrifice on that altar you see you just think you get up and touch somebody because the bible says bless no there is a sacrifice we honor jesus among other reasons because he hung on that cross brothers and sisters i hope you know there was no covering around him it's just films that put it because children will be watching too that 33 year old man was hung naked on the cross his only covering was blood he would have stopped it but he said this is the price for that throne so don't you dare insult that throne that's why every demon must answer when you invoke the power in that throne you don't know what he went through the highest and noblest expression of true love is sacrifice it's not the only one but it is sacrifice pray one minute over these four things we are still going to continue pray while you are seated please pray she ne abani sabora, she ne abani salama, she ne awan ke zuchata. Kaunar Allah, she ne abani sabora, she ne abani salama. Pray, Lord, give me the grace that passion be captured in my definition of love. Let me be passionate about something. Let me be passionate about my wife. Let me be passionate about my husband let's be sincere and tell us ourselves the truth are you passionate about the business are you passionate about god are you committed to the sister are you committed to the brother or you just want to marry you want to exit bachelorhood you want to exit spinsterhood and you are so selfish that you are not looking to see that you are actually capturing these dimensions how about pleasure pleasure your life must produce pleasure to your spouse your life must produce pleasure to your parents to your leaders to your office to your company you can't just be taken your life must produce pleasure to God yes all men are not perfect but your life must produce pleasure to God finally sacrifice pray this issue of having it at my thumbs ladies pray this issue of having it at my will no sir it can't always be the way you want life is not like that go and ask any married man ask anybody in a visionary relationship ask every millionaire ask any great man of god there are constraints there are times it will not go your way don't take it personal there are times it will not go your way sacrifice sacrifice hallelujah sit down what then 
is love seeing that love is not feeling seeing that love is not emotions seeing that love is not a beautiful face a matchless six pack seeing that love is not a jeep packed outside seeing that love is not the ability to cook well in a lady seeing that love is not even the prayer favor of a guy what then is love for the rest of your life as you live don't forget what i'm about to teach you if you master this as taught by the inventor of love himself higher than any relationship expert higher than any consultant psychologist this is god's perspective of love number one love true love is a choice write it down true love is a choice true love is a choice it's an act of the will true love is not feelings when you believe you are in love then it is a choice listen come to sin the next time you say to sin i love you what you have said is to sin i choose you by the act of my will i have chosen whether or not i think you are the best whether or not i think you are the brightest whether or not i think you are the finest chef whether or not i think you are the most beautiful lady the most handsome guy the most visionary the most born again whether or not this business is the one that makes me become a millionaire fastest whether or not this ministry is the most anointed when i say i love you i'm saying i choose you it's a choice any manifestation of love especially in the context of relationship and marriage that usurps the will of man is witchcraft no matter what vision you see about what lady no matter what dream you have about what brother no matter what counselors tell you in the final analysis your will must be involved otherwise it is not true love write it down love true love is a choice a choice to be and live with someone in the context of marriage when you say you love someone it is a decision you have made to be a decision to live with that someone not a decision to live with the person look up if the person is perfect not a decision to live with someone if things are good or bad when you say jesus i love you now you know what you are saying jesus i choose you i have gone online and googled all the gods on the earth and i've seen names that i was never told but i checked everything and i came to you jesus for whatever reason i've made up my mind to go god's way for the rest of my life that's love brother I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Pastor Alpha chose Annie. He made up his mind that as far as this life is concerned, this is the personality who will be with me. It doesn't matter whether he's happy with her or sad. It doesn't matter whether she's happy with him or sad. Whatever differences arise is not worthy enough to corrupt this decision brother that's love if you ever say you like a lady make sure this is what you are saying so as i'm talking now be checking what you are doing are you choosing the person for now or are you choosing the person some of you are about to ask ladies this week next week listen before you go to anybody and say i love you ask a very clear question have i chosen you or are you just choosing because of your level of exposure i suspect Emeka is a doctor. I'm not yet clear. So let me 
let me say yes to him while i verify if i find out oh i i thought he was the one i say it's another face so i don't love him again i love you i choose you if a maker says i know i studied um medicine but the lord is calling me and he's sending me to zamfara now your love is being tested you thought it was about a great guy who would be a consultant have his private hospital fly you around unfortunately you said you choose him many of us young people don't know what we're saying truly speaking when we mention this love thing lightly lord i love the assignment you have given me and then we sit down two years lord i said i love you and i love this assignment but i have only five members i have on, nobody's caring for me lord i'm on my way going after all i read this i can go and start extra morals and god says you don't love it a choice everybody say a choice say it again a choice ask anybody who has been married for a long time they will tell you there were legitimate reasons as to why they will feel they made a mistake in that marriage but every time they remember their choice that's why when you stand on stage with your wife they don't ask your father to answer for you or your mother to answer for you like rapture you stand alone is God speaking to us tonight because what I'm saying is very important I love you too much and God knows and sees my heart that I have an assignment to bridge the ignorance and the catastrophe that the devil is programming to happen between young people and young ladies many ladies who claim they love many guys have not chosen therein lies the revelation of these hilarious mood swings that fly up today and tomorrow a choice is a costly thing when you know the gravity you will not be hasty you will think well you won't say i am 35 i need to hurry up time is not on my side to choose that's why it matters who preaches to you to give your life to christ it matters what you are told if all you are told is that you come to jesus christ and all your troubles go away i believe in the victory of christ but brothers and sisters i've shown you the dimensions of love and there are times that some of those dimensions will cost you there are people who gave their lives to christ and they did not last seven days they knew that what they were signing up for was a bomb blast there are reverends in different parts of this nation who said i love you and with all the terrorism there jesus i love you and on sunday they had the sounds of bombs and they still got up and looked at their wives and said honey if i never come back let it be that i died for the one i loved and they went and were killed and never returned they got up that morning knowing they may die ha! who corrupted our definition of love and left it only to pleasure and that at our own times you may not like me for what i'm sharing but i tell you this this is the recommendation from the inventor of this thing a choice i've made a choice to serve god with all my life if donald trump calls me and says young man we want to give you a very noble position in america you're receiving a salary of hundred thousand dollars per month with anything you want do you think i'll run and leave you i know what some of you will do just hearing it although you are not the ones you will never come to church again you go and cook food and bring for me and say remember me <laughs> though man forsake me still i will follow no turning back no turning back Though men forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning Listen, back. this work of the ministry you see me do is not because I don't have options. Brothers and sisters, this man standing before you is, is a businessman. I think I'm quite smart. There are many other things I would have chosen to do with my life. Are we together? Yes. 
but it's a choice that I will stand and communicate the life and the power of Jesus I never came into ministry for honorarium do you know let me tell you God is my witness when I started ministry I didn't know they used to give men seats and honorarium but right now you see every young man quarreling just because they called him into a small group to share something for 10 minutes and he finishes he refuses to go You call him come and play keyboard in the house of god a small church that the entire titan offering is not up to 30 30 000. the person said pay me twenty thousand because you went to a music school it's a choice it's a choice that's why we must take care of our children because they did not choose we owe a responsibility to take care of them even if the couples make mistake with their lives the children must not be victims of it they didn't choose any relationship built by force and whose power to choose is taken away is an ungodly relationship at every point of your relationship the power to choose must remain listen that's why those who abuse women are going to hellfire if they don't repent those who beat and when a man beats and slaps his wife forcing her to make a decision when a woman beats and slaps her husband forcing him to make it a decision when a woman manipulates her husband against his will like jezebel into doing what was not willingly decided that's not love is witchcraft every relationship and every marriage must leave the willingness of the personalities involved sadly this extends right now in the days that we live even to extended families where parents and in-laws attempt to choke their hands and manipulate the state of marriages if you must marry my daughter or now that you are married to my daughter you must live in london or you must live in this no matter what god is telling you these things are wrong love is a choice and everything around it must remain a choice now let me tell you this this is how god helps people especially when it comes to making decisions you can go to god and god will tell you son i gave you the will to choose whatever woman you want and you say lord i take that will back by myself to you because i am not sure of my decision i know how vulnerable i am so justified before heaven that you gave me the power to choose i have returned it back to you as a token of my trust and god says now that's it you have proven to me that if i choose a wife for you it is not against your will because you trust me that's the only condition where you will see the dream and trust it and the vision and trust it not just that you get up and see anything and stand up and blame god It's a choice number two hmm. true love is understanding the value the worth and the significance of a person true love is understanding the value the worth the significance of a person or a thing to God to you and to humanity true love is understanding the value the worth the importance the significance of a person to God number one to your life number two and to society number three the second definition of love is love is understanding value when you pay fifty thousand dollars to buy a car you park that car in a special garage because of what it cost you to obtain it now watch this come are you ready to marry this woman and take her as your lovely wedded wife you said yes they asked her what of you yes 
two of you and then just because she should she did not she was not able to give you a child listen carefully first month of marriage no child second month of marriage no child or whatever it is all of a sudden you begin to make derogatory statements two men cannot live in the same house so what you are saying is i listen i do not see your worth i do not see your value i do not see your significance to god to me and to society true love is understanding the value of things so when you are doing that business you love that business only if you understand the significance of that business to kingdom advancement the significance of that business to your finances the significance to the development of your society if not don't say i love it why do i wake up in the night and study and prepare for every message and labor through the hours is because i love god is because i love you i understand what this information will do to your life will do to the kingdom will do to your children and your children's children never say you love any lady whose significance to your life you have not perceived let me tell you this look at me everybody if you have any measure of success before a lady or a man enters your life be careful because the more successful you are chances are that you will hardly see the significance of a man or a woman in your life there are successful women who are collecting 300,000 as single ladies 400,000 as single ladies they are traveling to embassies they have snapped with presidents there is every likelihood that they will be bad wives you know why because based on their experiences almost everything a man should represent has been represented in their success so when they say they want to marry a man they find out that when the man comes and says my food say your your, your what are you crazy i stay in a hotel with 13 towels and servants come and give me this and you are saying i should pound yam for you you are reducing me they say to a village girl the best recommendation for such a beautiful sister is remain single and support the kingdom yes you will be more useful to god it's true that's why paul didn't marry if paul married only god knows the version of pain that the church would have received the wife would have seen her husband less than 10 times in his entire lifetime are we together understanding value i watch relationships and i see how the ladies devalue the men because maybe they didn't read certain things or they have not become certain things yet and you see the communication of devaluation to the men that's not love love is that i perceive your significance in my life why do i love god or do i really love god yes i have seen the value of god in my life Aya, for without me ye can do nothing so when i say lord i love you and i seek you i'm not doing god a favor by coming to church when i come to church his word cleanses me and gives me an understanding that programs me for victory it's not a favor to god are we together it is because Vashti did not see the significance of Ahasuerus in her life. So when he said, Vashti, come and flaunt yourself. She said, so I'm now a property. Now, I don't know what he has done, but she has forgotten that that guy is a king over 127 provinces. Brothers and sisters, let's not lie to ourselves. That's a great man. A man who is a king over 127 provinces deserves the honor of any woman who is wise. It's true. So she said well i don't know what you are saying you have money i have money you have the throne i have a beautiful face and he said off you go then it occurred to her that there are older options it was a choice to keep you the same way you say lord if i don't come for koinonia joshua selma you can't do anything 
and God will say okay I will raise somebody that didn't even finish secondary school and anoint him is Dr. Paul Enenche that says God will use the calabash to disgrace the pot. He will use calabash to fetch water so that the pot will see that that you are being used is not because you don't have holes. It's because God is giving you a chance. There's nothing called indispensable in this kingdom. No. There are wives that when they get married, they don't care again not about their husbands not about anything there are husbands when they get married there are guys that when they say when a lady says yes to them that's the end of it there are ladies that when a guy asks them out and now they know that singleness is over people change and vacillate because there is no understanding please don't ever ask any lady you do not see her worth and significance in your life the danger is you will punish that dear lady and you will victimize her don't ever say yes to any man you know you will not be proud on based on the value it is painful to watch a guy do his best for a lady and she keeps giving an impression you are not worthy enough or a lady does her very best to a guy and he's communicating is not enough even god does not do that to you when he sees your sacrifices god acts as though he cannot do without you that should flatter you but it's true i search for a man a Jimmy, the god of the heavens who made the heavens and the earth parted the sea with the breath of his nostrils is going around searching and that search came to a young poor small boy called joshua selman and he says can i use you to shake the nations god boy you can do without me i know i have limited myself because i love you i have made you valuable in my program that's god if you are married here or you're in a relationship you should go back and find what significance your husband your wife or your friend or your business means to you and to god i'm giving you a basis don't just say yes to a guy don't just ask a lady out don't just start business discern the value are we together yes i love our daddy here with all my heart i love him i've made a choice to love and honor him but i've also discerned the relevance and the significance of his authority his influence to my life to this ministry to the advancement of god's kingdom many of us do not respect our parents because we have not discerned when a woman is treating her husband anyhow what she's saying is i looked at my life and i've not found where you are valuable that's not a good thing when a guy looks at a lady and treats her like a piece of rag what he's simply trying to say is my dear i have not seen your relevance that's why it's dangerous to tie love to things like beauty and the rest because by the time she's 50 years old and she's not as beautiful as she was 19 or 20 or 21 when you married her now all of a sudden oh the guy was tall dark and handsome and now the guy is suffering from prostate cancer and he has to be relegated to a wheelchair and you are the one doing the pushing don't say job's wife did not love him now you know job's wife stood close to him she was frustrated she spoke anyhow but she remained there till he was healed now listen let me say one thing that is going to shock many of you we're rounding up the only part of love that is unconditional is choice hmm. you know we say agape is unconditional love is true but let me break it down to you not every part of love is unconditional the choice to remain the choice to stay with your wife or your husband is unconditional but the honor that's going to be the third point that i will give is conditional your, a man is not going to sit down and live irresponsibly and then expect every manifestation of honor 
that is accrued to greatness it doesn't work that way the choice is what should never change are we together god has chosen to love all men but he does not bestow the same honor upon them it is based on their alignment this is god let's finish the second point i love you means i understand the extent of your usefulness and significance to my life and destiny that's what it means that means there is no shame of being vulnerable Ejimi loves his daughter she's there taking water and enjoying herself and he's there well dressed she may pour water on his shirt doesn't matter he understands the significance of this dear lady there are people looking for children and God has blessed him and he's not ashamed to be vulnerable there are mothers here who were just a few years ago young ladies but right now they have to run to go and breastfeed their children and they are not embarrassed because they understand the value of the gift of a child please don't get into any relationship where there is no absolute revelation of the value of the person you are bringing in your life abuse is a product of lack of discerning value whether to a woman or to a man a man that beats his wife is not just an ungodly man he's a man who does not love her do you know why because he has not discerned her value if i told you this watch was for instance three hundred thousand, right i have placed value on it and say i'm wearing on my hands an object that is three hundred thousand worth of gold and then if i remove it and give you will you forget it on a chair please talk to me you will protect it your protection is a revelation of the value and what it can do to you that you can remove this watch and run to Kano black market and make over three hundred and sixty thousand from this watch and so if i give you you say thank you if sam tears a piece of paper from his book and gives you you may forget it on the ground that's exactly the revelation you give in the way you treat your children so when a man has five children and does not take care of them what he's saying is i don't think any of you will be useful in this life so there is no point being committed to your future value the keeper of israel he'll never sleep nor slumber he's watching over me he knows i'm useful to his kingdom the keeper of israel will never sleep nor slumber he's watching over me there is a law in this ministry anybody who is sick we make sure that within 24 hours latest 48 that report would have reached me and the heads of department alongside other executives try to meet the person in partnership with the welfare department if need be we send them to the hospital and as much as we can foot the bill we love them but the truth is we have seen the significance of a precious worker to the continuity of this assignment i will not be too arrogant to say without you god will still move i know he can still move but since he has chosen you then i must respect it i can't act as if your participation is not helping the ministry rise i can't act as if without you sometimes we do that thing we must be careful do not be embarrassed to communicate value there are people in my life who are useful I let them know there are people in this ministry who are useful I let them know have you communicated value to those who mean a lot to you both your destiny helpers and your enemies are in the same category in your mind there is nobody that is worth your understanding their value and their usefulness number three we have to round up true value is honor true love i meant to say 
is honor it's first a choice then it is understanding the worth and the usefulness of a person or a thing to you and then true love is honor what is honor the recognition the acknowledgement and the celebration can even be the rewarding of that value that you now understand it's not enough to know that a wife is valuable to you no matter how much you love god without a woman you will not be able to have another child another life so when a woman comes into your life just because you put a ring in her hand does not mean you treat her like a piece of rag she is the mother of your children she is the reason why you are called abba father wife don't treat your husband or you are in a relationship treat the other party no when they say those who are in a relationship stand up if you ever stand up as a lady it's because somebody discerned you enough to ask you out and even sustain the courage to go and see your parents please don't take it for granted survived all the embarrassing things that needed to go through and they asked him before the whole world are you willing to take care of this lady he said yes most ladies don't understand that being a man is very hard it's easy to stand like a referee and a commentator and a supporters club you are supposed to bring the school fees how about by now you should have a car let me submit to you being a man is hard that's why the prisons are full of them they try and try and try it doesn't work legally they jump a luxurious bus and they are caught they try the pressure that women put on men put on their husbands buy this buy that build a house buy they just name it because nigerian film showed that if you love me you must spend on me let's be careful to be a man is a sacrifice that's why jesus didn't come as a woman he came as a man now i'm not i'm not teaching some feminist thing i have great regard and respect but there are certain burdens no matter what human right movement is flaunting the earth there are some loads that only a man a man is a mystery is a system he's not just a masculine figure with a husky voice it's more than that he's a burden bearer any man you ever see that is paying the price to keep his family or keep a relationship please respect the person don't open your mouth and run people's families there are there are men who don't sleep in the night when their wives are sleeping lord open the doors for my children don't sit down and trivialize it love is honor the recognition the celebration that's what esther did when esther came she knew she was a beautiful lady but when ahasuerus chose her for the rest of her life in that palace she honored the king he said look i hope you know that you were choosing ladies if they were all fine what of me <clears throat> this pride will destroy your sisters please i talk to you from a heart of love when a man who is worthy of honor comes into your life and proves himself to be worthy of honor do not be ashamed to communicate that honor a businessman comes into your life and wants to advise you you have seen his result don't act like we are colleagues humble yourself and communicate the honor that's why we don't come before god and do big manism when it's time to worship him we can kneel down and roll on the floor and say lord it is you that gave me life oh, which who gave you life where your mother is there like, uh -uh, i know and god says you did this to me let the blessings come down the embarrassment of showering honor between husbands and wives wives husbands students lecturers parents children mentors mentees leaders is what is destroying people's concept of love i love you means i am willing to intentionally recognize acknowledge celebrate and reward your uniqueness and your usefulness in my life so if i say pastor toby i love you or promise i love you 
what I'm trying to say is I have come to terms with the fact that if you live my life I can't lie that I will not feel it that's honor and I'm willing to express it herein lies the pride that destroys relationships the pride that destroys marriage where husbands claim they can do without their wives where wives claim they can do without their husband when a company worker claims he can do without his ceo where mentees claim they can live without a mentor where a member claims he knows everything the pastor is saying honor the willingness first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 I know the usefulness of the worship team to my life as a person to koinonia as a ministry i know the usefulness of the prayer department to my life i know the usefulness of all of the people that represent this ministry i know the usefulness of the media department to my efficiency in preaching i know the usefulness of all the people seated outside that's why we honor you by providing buses after service it's it cost us a lot but for as long as god grants grace we will continue doing it it's honor you honor me and you respect me very much and i appreciate because you have seen not just the significance of god in your life you have come to discern my usefulness and you are not ashamed to express it that's why you send the text messages of honor that's why you sow the seeds i wait to see you after service as tired as i am whether i've eaten or not because i honor you god gave me the anointing because you are there if you are not there the anointing will not come to me much more than prayer and fasting the anointing is only in my life because there is someone to receive so i can pay the price to receive it true honor is mutual i'm rounding up true honor is mutual write it down especially in the context of marriage and relationships true one-sided honor is selfishness and it is devilish the woman cannot be the one communicating honor indefinitely no a wise man must reciprocate back honor i honor the lord he honors me with his presence he honors me with results i can speak and say there's someone in overflow three and a long distance from where i am the angel of the lord's presence will honor that word spoken by a small man elijah honored the lord the lord honored his word true honor is mutual many relationships suffer many marriages suffer many business relationships suffer many friendships suffer because there is a one-sided communication of honor so come darling the husband sees the value of the woman showers all kinds of love like christ's church make sure that she's looking beautiful make sure that she's happy make sure that the children are well taken care of and then the woman takes him for granted after all is your right i didn't ask you out you are the one who chased me they say dangerous there must be a reciprocation the same way a woman is almost worshiping her husband like sarah calling abraham lord going out of her way doing things she never would have done to communicate honor and there comes the arrogant and pompous man beating his chest many of our loved ones that's how they humiliated our village mothers some of our mothers who came from the village and met a little father who had the privilege to go to school and he spent his life humiliating our mothers because he felt after all you were a village girl somewhere i took you and cleaned you and for that you will keep worshiping me for the rest of your life no sir honor is mutual lord i love you son i back you lord i worship you son i honor you my wife thank you for being beautiful and looking wonderful for me my husband thank you for being responsible to make me like this honor are we together oh my son thank you 
for paying the price you took first position you made me a proud father daddy thank you so much i have watched them drive children for school fees but you paid my school fees a session beforehand i acknowledge you there will hardly be any fight when there is a determination from both parties to consistently don't say i know it in my heart even god knows it. my brother men look at the outward appearance don't say i know it in my heart i love you means i am willing to celebrate your usefulness not just your uniqueness i am willing are you willing to celebrate the, the uniqueness of that lady you love that you are about to ask during valentine are you willing to celebrate the usefulness of that brother that god gave you you are seeing ladies trusting god for brothers you are seeing brothers trusting god for ladies you were not even praying and god brought a correct brother to you you are about to lose that brother because of lack of discernment and lack of honor god brought a nice lady to you you are seeing ladies giving men heart attack all around town and God gave you a nice lady with a meek and a quiet spirit and you are about taking it for granted a lady you can count hundred thousand and give and she says my husband thank you but I know that you have a greater need ten thousand will do the family take ninety thousand and do something with it as a proof of trust not that she pockets and keeps it and say this wicked man you have a lady that is that vulnerable to you and can mumu herself for you and you are not going to behave yourself and honor that woman like you would a trophy there is problem in our society we must learn we are going to pray tonight i know that our time has gone but this is what love is it is a choice a choice love is a perception of the value of god of men of laws to the usefulness of your life and love is the celebration of that usefulness don't take anything for granted in your life don't take anything for granted in your life you can take this finger for granted until the day there is a weight load there and you find out that the pain from this finger will force your leg as healthy as it is from walking that's the day you will know that this finger plays a role men who are seven feet tall died because the small heart stopped working you small heart you call it a great man can run to india because two tiny substances called eyes stopped working his hands didn't stop working but just because the eyes were not working it can paralyze the man could it be that what you are ignoring in your life may be the epicenter of your relevance and you ignore it anything you dishonor is authorized to live your life a husband may not live your life a wife may not live your life the person you are going out with may not live your life but something about them will leave you it's true I will teach you something next week we are not wrong there is a powerful the most important part of this teaching is what is about to come but I'll forward that for next week Jesus grant us grace do we have something to pray about rise up on your feet tonight is a sober night I know it's been a challenging time for different people but I want you to remember everything I've said love is not feelings love is not emotions it's more than that love is not the tingly feeling towards a person or a thing no there are dimensions to love there is passion there is commitment there is pleasure there is sacrifice and then I define love for you as defined by God himself that number one true love is a choice number two true love is a perception of the value the usefulness a comprehension of the need don't marry until you understand the, the usefulness of marriage to your life 
to God's agenda. Don't have children until you understand the usefulness of children to your life. Don't bring a wife, don't bring a husband until you discern their usefulness and then honor the outspoken, unashamed recognition, rewarding, celebrating of that usefulness in your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the spirit of wisdom tonight. Jabragato sakata briada kata balada bos. Mandela kosa siyamara siyada ba. Now you can say, Lord, I love you. From the standpoint of the revelation that you have, Lord, I love you. It's a choice that I've made. It's a choice that I've made. I'm passionate towards you. I'm committed towards you. I derive pleasure being with you and I'm ready to lay down everything if need be for you. I've made a choice. It is a choice. I understand your usefulness in my life. I understand your significance in my life and I'm willing to celebrate you. No other God can tell his creature I love you. I don't take you for granted that you love me, that you died for me. Hallelujah. Just one prayer tonight. Lord, break down my pride and in the, in the place of that space, create room for this revelation. Let it enter me. Go ahead and pray. Take away every pride from my life. Some of you, what I'm saying is hard on you, but it is the word of the Lord. It is the spirit of wisdom to your life. Lord burn this truth in my heart that every time I say I love a sister I love a brother I love my wife I love my husband I love my job I love koinonia I love the Holy Spirit let it be that I have an understanding that I've made my choice I discern the usefulness and I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to reward. I'm ready to appreciate. Hallelujah. Listen. Please everyone stand. When you reject Jesus. And you say I don't love you. You know what you have said now. I have the power to say yes to you. But I use my will. And I reject you. Number two. When you say no to Jesus. What you say is that I have not seen your usefulness in my life. I've seen the usefulness of a certificate, so I pursued it. I've seen the usefulness of a job, so I'm still dropping my CV, but I have not seen your usefulness. Number three, I do not think you are important and worthy of my worship and my acknowledgement. But I know that there are people in all the overflows and others following online who are saying, Apostle, I never knew that this was what loving Jesus was all about and right now that you have spoken I really want to run to Jesus to communicate my love wherever you are our time is gone whether you are inside overflow three you will walk to your projector stand but overflow one and two wherever you are I want you to run and say apostle I want to love Jesus I want to love Jesus genuinely where are they where are they? Where are those who are not ashamed? Nobody's closing his eyes. Make your way to the front. Inside or outside. Remember it's a choice. No one can force you. You can sit on your seat. Or you can get up and say, Apostle, I'm coming to Jesus. It's a choice. I have an option to say no. I've told other things, lesser things, yes. But I say yes to Jesus. Keep coming, we're out of time. Keep coming. I say yes to Jesus. In pain and in pleasure. I say yes to Jesus. I'm willing to be passionate. I'm willing to be committed. I'm willing to derive pleasure from my experience with him. And I'm willing to sacrifice all for him. I've made a choice. It is Jesus only and Jesus ever. I've made a choice. I see your usefulness in my life. I've made a choice. I will live my life to honor you and bring glory. Like Esther did Ahasuerus. Keep coming. 
Let's appreciate them as they come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All of you in front, those following us online, keep coming. God bless you. And then those uh, at Overflow 3. I want you to say this after me. Please mean it from your heart. I've told you what love is. And I want you to say it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. I truly love you. Tonight, I make a choice to hand over my life and everything about it to you and to your lordship i make jesus lord of my life king of my life lover of my life savior of my life from today and forever i declare that you are my lord the owner the manager of my life i declare that the power of sin satan the grave is over in my life i declare that jesus is my savior i receive your life i receive salvation amen keep your hands lord jesus i stretch my hands over these ones they have communicated their willingness to choose you above all mm. they have communicated their willingness to love you to serve you to live for you help that lady in the name of jesus satan you saw their decisions you heard what they said i command that your power be far from them in the name of jesus christ i supply upon you the grace it takes to live the reality of this confession i declare that eternal life is yours from tonight the grace upon you to live a victorious life i release it right now in jesus name i declare your sins forgiven i declare that a new chapter is opened over your life in jesus name amen and amen congratulations congratulations please follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you follow the gentleman they will um, just appraise you and grant you some information and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them quickly hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain